Could you beat Molly McCann in the streets? Well, if that's a woman, which I'm assuming it is, if she's called Molly, I think I could do her in, you know, I'm unbeaten in the streets. And my record against women is probably four wins, four knockouts. Three knockouts against women in the streets. So I don't know who this Molly is, but yeah, I think I'll do her in as well. You don't like the thought of a woman beating you up, but sometimes you have to accept it. Prince Patel has got to accept that Katie Taylor could beat him up in the streets and in boxing. Yeah, that little bitch, Sonny Edwards, he's got to accept that Clarissa Shields would mess him up, you know, in the streets. They, I told you that I've seen Sonny Edwards coming out of an alleyway in Sheffield on a Saturday night with all blood all over his face. So these little five stone men, like they're little fucking posses, aren't they? Every woman on a dating app is a single mom. That's it. That's it. You go on Tinder now. You go on Plenty of Fish. You go on Badoo. And most of the women, like nine out of ten of the women that you look at, they're like single moms, innit? And that's why they're on there, because they, they haven't really got any choice. They're like leftovers. They like reject. Yeah, I'm sure we'll find a way. All I would say is this arena, I don't know for anyone that's not been, but the fans are right on top of the Be arena. safe, yeah. Of them in, so but I swore at a woman the other day, you know. I swore at this woman, you know, the other day. It was about a week ago. Because I was like walking, yeah. I was in town. It was about one o'clock in the morning. I was like walking and there was this like woman like walking towards me and uh, she looked a bit drunk she was like stumbling you know what I mean she didn't look too bad but I could tell that she had a few drinks you know by the way she was walking and she was like walking towards me looking a bit drunk so I thought you know what I'm gonna make a move you know I'm gonna make a sexual move so like when she got close to me, I said to her, you all right, yeah? And she didn't answer me. She ignored me. So I said, well, fuck you then. You know what I mean? That's what I said to her. You know, I don't like talking to people like that, innit? But I don't like getting ignored and rejected. You know what I mean? I took it personal. You know, when I said hello to the woman and she like ignored me and she didn't have any headphones in, she heard what I said. She walked past me and I said, all right. And she didn't say anything. So I said, well, fuck you then. You know what I mean? I don't really talk to people like that, but I kind of took it personal, innit? Fucking Coogan, pouting every minute. What's all that about? That's a bit unmanly, innit? You know, Coogan pouting and that, he's, he's been hanging around, you know, with those The Only Ways Essex wankers for too long, ain't it, Coogan? That's what they're about, aren't they? Botox, fucking pouting, little, little, little arse butt lifts, yeah? Brazilian butt lifts, liposuction, pouting, so Coogan's kind of... Gone down that path, honey. Tattoos. You know, Cesora. Coogan interviewed him today, you know, in a little sandwich shop. And Cesora said to Coogan, like, let me turn the camera around to focus on you. And like Coogan, he was like, say, no, no, my hair's not done. You know what I mean? What kind of a fucking manly response is that? My hair's not done. So Coogan is becoming a bit feminine, isn't he, bent legs? <laughs> Ram and Nathan Ramming and Nathan He's becoming a bit feminine isn't he Bentlex That's what women do don't they You know when you like try and like take a photo of them They're like no 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 my makeup's not My makeup my hair my hair Oh 
Oh, that's what Coogan was doing, money in that interview with Cesaro. So it's a bit unmanly, isn't it? I think, um, you know, the government, they're putting like little, you know, little chemicals in the water and they're making men turn into a bunch of fucking posses. And we kind of seen that with Coogan, didn't we? You know, and he didn't want to get on camera with Cesaro. But like, you know, Hasim Rackman, he was calling Lennox gay, you know, and Lennox took it personal. Hasim Rackman said, oh, I've never seen Lennox with a woman. You know, he's a bit fruity. He's a bit Ramanathan-esque. And Lennox took that personal. You know, these little fruity fuckers in boxing now. Connor Ben with the little beard transplant and Coogan pouting. And Eubank Jr. with a hair tattoo and that. Yeah, that's what they like, aren't they now? But you know, back in the day, Lennox Lewis, he was a fucking gangster. And he fucking... Like, I know I sound like sexist. You know, when I say like... I would knock out a woman, you know, if she tried to fucking put it on me. And uh, women who have got kids are fucking rejects. You know, they're like leftovers. They're like mouldy bread. You know, food that's out of date, you know, in the shops. You know, food that's out of date. It's on like the cheap pile, in it? It's in the reduced section, and that's kind of what women are like. Who have got kids. And that might sound a bit harsh, but it's not. It's best to put that out there. You know, it's best to talk to your kids like that. Say if you've got a daughter, yeah, and she's like 13. You need to be saying to your daughter, if you have fucking kids with some random man who's a fucking low life, and you end up a desperate single mom on a dating app, you're not going to be in demand. You know, you're going to be at the bottom of the fucking pile. You're not going to... You're not gonna fucking so you're better off putting that out there, you know what I mean? Instead of like I think people I think people praise single moms too much. Do you know what I mean? I think they praise them and they shouldn't because it's almost like you're encouraging women like saying, Oh yeah, well done for being a single mom. You know, well done for raising your kid on your own and you know, being a strong, independent mom, raising your kid on your own. But why is that a good thing, though? Like, why are you praising women for being single moms? You should be slandering them. You know, for just going out there and just having sex with some random fucking lowlife and having a kid. So now your kid's going to grow up without a dad. And then we, you know, you, 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 it's all right saying, congratulations for working three jobs to support your kid. But we know that story, don't we? When the woman's at work, working in three jobs, where's the kid? The kid's roaming the streets. Someone just said, single moms that work is a different story. But I've just said, it's all right working three jobs to look after your kid as a single mom. But while you're at work, what's the kid doing? The kid's fucking roaming the streets. You know, and we know what that leads to, don't we? I was watching an interview with Biggie Smalls. And he said his mum was at work all the time. His dad wasn't really around. So Biggie, he was out there selling drugs. You know, and getting involved in bullshit. You know, and he got murdered. So this guy here in the comments who's just said, Oh yeah, but what about women who are single mums and they work? Yeah, what about it? What about it? They're at work. Who's looking after the kid? The kid's roaming the streets. And we know that fucking story, don't we? We've heard it time and time again. So it's, there's no excuse. We need to stop praising single moms, man. And stop saying, oh, well done for being a single mom. Someone just said single moms use their kids for financial benefits more than love. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's a, I've been watching a few conspiracy theorists you know, on YouTube and they say that the government introduced like benefits, you know, so that women would feel like comfortable, like leaving the man, even though they've got a kid with him, leaving the man because they know they'd get supported by the government. So that was like an incentive, you know, to like leave the man, you know, and these conspiracy theorists say that that's the agenda, you know, of the government to break up families. 
you know, divide and conquer and all that. They don't want unity, they want separation. So they start introducing like benefits, you know, so women can have kids and just fucking fuck the man off and feel like they're okay. Because they don't need a man, they've got benefits. But then what? The kid grows up in a single parent household. Yeah? And ends up on some fucking bullshit out there selling drugs. So yeah, I don't know, man. It's a bit weird, it's a bit fucked up, isn't it? Shout out to Jack for the five pound super chat. If your girlfriend and your mom switched bodies and you had to sleep with one of them to get them to switch back to normal, which would you choose? Yeah, that's a bit disgusting, isn't it? That's disgusting, but like, I think all of us, you know, all of us men, you're a man, aren't you? Probably. I think most men watch these videos. It's mainly men in it. And I think that every single man at one point in time has thought to himself, would I suck a dick for one million pounds? And it's a disgusting thought, isn't it? And we don't like to think about it. And I don't even like talking about it, but it's something that most men have considered. You know what I mean? Would you do it or not? What do you think? A million pounds. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to fucking get into that. But I swore at a woman the other day, you know. I swore at this woman, you know, the other day. It was about a week ago. Because I was like walking, yeah. I was in town. It was about one o'clock in the morning. I was like walking and there was this like woman like walking towards me and uh, she looked a bit drunk she was like stumbling you know what I mean she didn't look too bad but I could tell that she had a few drinks you know by the way she was walking and she was like walking towards me looking a bit drunk so I thought you know what I'm gonna make a move you know I'm gonna make a sexual move so like when she got close to me, I said to her, you all right, yeah? And she didn't answer me. She ignored me. So I said, well, fuck you then. You know what I mean? That's what I said to her. You know, I don't like talking to people like that in it, but I don't like getting ignored and rejected. You know what I mean? I took it personal. You know, when I said hello to the woman and she like ignored me and she didn't have any headphones in, she heard what I said. She walked past me and I said, all right. And she didn't say anything. So I said, well, fuck you then. You know what I mean? I don't really talk to people like that, but I kind of took it personal, innit? I sparred Tyson Fury, you know, when he came down to the gym. I sparred him, yeah, and I like blacked his eye true story like no I'm not lying I blacked his eye up and then like after the spa you know we got out of the ring and uh, Dominic Ingle he said to uh, me and Tyson right you two stand together I'm gonna take a photo and Tyson said oh that's the little bastard who blacked my eye up you know and then we had a nice little photo and we put on a little fake smile and that. yeah so I blacked his eye up in it. Tyson Fury, the fucking best heavyweight in boxing since Lennox Lewis. And I bust him up. <laughs> <laughs> broke them up. I broke up his eye. I broke him up. But but then Eddie Hearn, he knows how to talk, don't he? He's a bit of a he's a bit of a con artist, isn't he? He used to be like a car salesman. So he knows how to scam people. He knows how to hustle, don't he? And use his little words and that to try and get the edge. You know, he tries to sell his 
these shit pay-per-views to us. You know, he tries to fool us, don't he? Eddie Earn. He tries to, like, take us for a fucking idiot. You know, trying to sell pay-per-view shows to us. You know, just because Derek Cesar is on the show. And fucking Dave Allen. And Shannon Contney. You know, and he might chuck that Ebony Bridges on there, you know, to try and sex up the show. Sex sells, don't it? So Eddie Earn, he knows how to sell a load of crap to us, don't he? So... Billy Joe Saunders called you Tyrone Booth. Yep, he did. He did. He kind of... He kind of fucking... He had the Canelo fight coming up though, didn't he? So he had those millions on his mind. He had the bag on his mind, you know what I mean? He had those fucking millions. So he might have forgot my name. Let me just have a quick piss here. Rodney Marsh gave me 10 pounds and he said, if you keep talking jive, I'll cut it to five. <laughs> yes, that's an Ali quote that is. If you keep talking jive, I'll cut it to five. You know, Joshua, he's trying to be on that level, isn't he? He's trying to be a poet, a fucking philosopher. You know what I mean? You know, Joshua, he's a bit disappointing, isn't he? He's a bit of a flop. He's a bit of a clown, isn't he? He tried to call Lennox Lewis a clown, but Joshua is like the real clown, isn't he? He's like saying that he's considering taking step aside money. He didn't really say that, but he, he kind of alluded to it, didn't he? But, pff, how much money has he got already? Like, you'd get more money for fighting Usyk. You talk about you're a businessman, but you'd get more money for actually fighting Usyk than stepping aside, so... You know, really, you know what, I, I'm a warrior in a garden, and gardeners are a bunch of pussies, and you, do, you don't want to be a gardener. Because they're a bunch of fucking hoes. They're a bunch of bitches. Better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in war. That's what he said, didn't he, Joshua? So where's this fucking tough warrior spirit then? You know what I mean? You're taking little posse step-aside money, yeah? So it don't really demonstrate you being a warrior, does it? Oh, no, no, no. Have you ever blocked anyone? No, it's not really my thing. You know, blocking people, it's a bit like... Why? If I diss people in my videos, you know, if someone disses me, why would I block them? It's a bit unmanly, isn't it? It's a bit cowardly. It's a bit... If you've got a problem with someone, like, say it, innit? It's like when Coogan told me to be safe, you know what I mean? I thought, why you be so... Why are you fucking talking like a little fucking hoe? Be safe. Like, if you've got a problem. Because basically, I was getting interviewed by this YouTube channel. And I, like, seen Coogan, like, walking towards me, yeah. And I could see him, like, looking at me like that. You know, like that. Like, like he really wanted to say something. I could see that he was, like, plucking up the courage. You know, to try and say something. He wanted to have a go at me, didn't he? And he was, like, looking at me like that, like... He was trying to say to himself, like, pluck up the, he was trying to pluck up the courage, you know, to try and say something. He was trying to pluck up the courage, you know, to try and put it on me. But he couldn't, he didn't have the courage, did he, Coogan? You know, he pussed it out, didn't he? Yes. Found a nice stream for the boxing tonight, you know. A nice little illegal stream, so it's going to be a... It's going to be a fucking good night tonight, I think. Yeah. We're going to have a good night. Is it? Yeah, that's him in the car with Eddie Earn, like, sucking up to him. Look how Coogan's, like, leaning in, you know, to Eddie Earn. Who sits in a car like that? You know, he's, like, trying to lean towards Eddie Earn, isn't he? <laughs> Be safe. Yeah, he's like leaning in, isn't he? He's trying to suck up to Eddie. Yeah, he's trying to... He's just want, trying to be accepted, isn't he? You know, did you know that he had his head pushed underwater? You know, when he went swimming. 
you know when he was a kid he went swimming and some bullies like forced his head under the water so you know now he's older he tries to like latch on to Eddie Earn don't he you know like a little yeah he's trying to so that's them in the car here yeah. <laughs> Rama Nathan the size game says Tyron how come you don't smile you look so cute when you smile if you ever come to London no need for a hostel you can sleep at mine I've got a big bed right you better not be a fucking man like, I'm being serious like any kind of any sign of any kind of kind of fucking I don't want to get shot down but you can't be you can't be a man and talking to me like that you know you can't do it man Do you wish he was fully white? No, I'm alright, you know. I'm okay. That little racist outburst on my live the other day. Stop falling this time. You are black and gay. Be proud. Yeah, I don't know about that, but... Uh... Junior Witter told me at a boxing show in Leeds that Tyrion was arrested for rape in Knotts and had to flee to Sheffield. Yeah, it's not true. You can look on the internet, you know, to see if, like, someone's got any kind of criminal convictions. There's, like, a database, especially for sex offenders. My uncle's on it. He banged his uh, underage daughter. I think she was about eight years old. So he's on there. So you can look. You know, if you've got any, like, suspicions of a man being dodgy, you know, if there's a man who lives on your street and he's, he's acting a bit like, a bit like fucking nonce, like Tyson Fury. Has Mason Greenwood got a better knockout record with women than you have, Tyson? You know what? I read about that, that Man United football player, like, I don't know. Some woman saying he raped her and that, but we've heard it before, haven't we? I've had a woman accuse me of rape and I never even fucked her. You know, she was just upset because I didn't give her a lift home. I told her to get a taxi. Some fat bitch. And she said, well, if you don't take me home, I'm going to tell the police that you raped me. You know what I mean? So I've heard it all before from women. I never cut my nails, you know. I know that sounds a bit disgusting, but they just like drop off, you know, whenever they feel like it. And I'm a bit weird. Like I like to, you know, when I, there's a bit of skin on my finger. I like to like peel back the skin, yeah. You know, really peel it back, you know, until it starts to bleed. And you know, when it starts to bleed, it like gives me an adrenaline rush. So like, you see my finger there, you see all that fucking blood. There's a bit of blood there, isn't there? Like there was a bit of skin on my finger and I like peeled it back, you know, and I really start to fucking get a little adrenaline rush, you know, when I start to bleed. Some people are like that, aren't they? You know, Ricky Hatton, he started slitting his wrists, didn't he? Oh, is this when he's fighting with that guy? He's arguing with him, isn't he? That's uh, Frank Warren's little right-hand man, Andy Alien. You know, and Coogan, he's trying to, like, you know, act all macho and that. You know, with his bent legs. Look, Coogan's trying to... He always puts it on, like, the vulnerable, don't he? You know, like Prince Patel and some fucking Frank Warren's right-hand man. Look at that. That guy's about 60 years old, man. Fuck, he's got glasses. You know what I mean? What's all that about? Let's have a look at that, Coogan. He's always like targeting the vulnerable, isn't he? Have you noticed? That guy's fucking old. He's got glasses. He's Frank Warren's right hand man. Coogan's like bullying him, isn't he? Why don't he ever say anything to me, though? Like, you know, all the things I've said about him. You know, he can't confront me like that, can he? If you noticed. You know, he has to tell me to be safe though, and he be safe. And then, like, why haven't he ever done that to me? I don't get it. Like, well, you know that live that I did the other day? You know, when I said I'm not into black women? You know, because of Whoopi Goldberg and people like Oprah Winfrey. So I said I'm not into black women in it. So this black woman on Snapchat. I don't know who she is, she like sent me a, a photo of her tits 
and she like captioned it saying something like are you sure you don't like black women do you know what I mean so you know these videos they kind of help me out a bit they help me out man we like it when he fucks up you know when he fucks up with the purse bids and he loses Canelo and fucking whoever else and his big fake prospect Joshua gets whooped we love it don't we you know when Eddie Earn gets on the mic after a Joshua win and Eddie Earn gets booed we fucking love it don't we so we like it when Eddie Earn fucks up like even when he was crying you know in that interview with one of those IFL fuckers I can't remember what he was crying about I think some boxer got messed up seriously so Eddie Earn he put on a few little tears didn't it and it was quite nice to see him crying a bit. So we kind of like it when he fucks up, don't we? But I kind of missed him, you know, at that press conference, that Chris Eubank Jr. Liam Williams press conference. You know, and that Ben Shalong was fucking boring the life out of us. We kind of missed Eddie Earn a bit, didn't we? You know, apples and pears and fucking, you know, he's got good banter, on not he? Even though we like it when he fucks up. Even when that guy, when, when Joshua got smacked up and uh, Joshua Joshua walked out the, the the ring and Eddie Earn was behind him, some guy said, Eddie, you pussy. <laughs> and Eddie Earn said, what you say? What you say? What you say? You shit yourself now, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you know, Eddie Earn and his feelings. <laughs> what you say? Yeah, he fucking... He's going downhill, man. That's what James Helder's like with Coogan. You know, when I go on nights out with uh, James Helder, you know, when I fucking mention Coogan, he gets a bit like he gets a bit in his feelings he gets a bit emotional man he don't want to talk about him and when he like speaks about Coogan he like refers to him as the other guy like I'd say to James like who was the first person out of you and Coogan to interview Eddie Earn? was it you or was it Coogan and James Helder would say, it was the other guy. You know what I mean? You could tell there's a lot of bitterness and resentment. He's got a big lump on the back of his head, on not Have you noticed? Look, you see that lump? He's got like a big lump. You know, like the elephant, man. You know Eubank is trying to be Dan Bilzerian isn't he? He's trying to be on that level isn't he? That should be me there with those fucking women man. I still can't believe I didn't win that fight. I just chucked it down the drain man. That should be me there with all those fucking women. Do you know what I mean? That was a wasted opportunity. I should have ended him you know before he even got going in boxing. I should have finished him. Yeah, I fucked up. Fucking Coogan. You know Coogan, yeah? You know, and I lost to Eubank. You know, after the fight, Coogan came into the changing rooms, yeah, with his camera. And he, like, looked at me for about five seconds. And he thought, no, nah, I ain't got time for losers. And then he, like, walked off. Why would you want your family to get fucking beat up, you know, by a load of Welsh people? You won't want it, would you? You don't, you don't need it. You don't need that kind of drama, man. What do you think? I think, you know, Coogan and Eddie Earn, they're like little mates, aren't they? Little fake mates. You know, they act all pally pally, don't they? They've got that little, little relationship, you know, where they call each other a dick. You know, Coogan will say, you're such a dick. Oh, you're such a dick. Oh, you're such a prick, Eddie Earn will say. Oh, you're such a prick. Oh, you're a prick, you know what I mean? You know, that cheesy, corny fucking Essex. 
cheeky Nando's banter, you know what I mean? It's they've got that on there, fucking Krugan and Eddie Earn, so that's what it is, isn't it? They've got that little relationship there. It's fake though, isn't it? It's not real, they just do that for the camera, they're not real mates, it's fake, I'm telling you. Yeah. You know the Jew, Ellie Sockback. He interviewed Krugan one time and he said this. Eddie Hearn has blown up huge, a billion dollars huge. You and him have been friends for a long time. How do you guys become friends? We're not really friends. I see the videos, you guys are having fun, you're pranking each other, yeah, you're laughing, you're driving for six hours at a time cross country. That doesn't really mean anything. It's just for show, huh? So, you know, Coogan, he basically admitted, didn't he, that he's, him and Eddie Earn, they're not real, real mates, you know, it's just, it's just an act, it's just for the cameras. You know, trying to get that banter going, you know, for entertainment, for the viewers. Yeah, you know that woman there, let me give you a bit of context, you know that woman there. That's Jake Paul's girlfriend, yeah. And, uh, you know, one of those IFL fuckers, they managed to get the interview with her. You know, before Coogan had a chance to. So, like, Coogan's looking on there, you know, all fucking bitter. You know, because he didn't get the interview first, he's so fucking bitter and twisted in it. So, you know, that little IFL fucker who interviewed her there, I think it was Oscar Bevis. You know, I don't think he's going to be around for too much longer, to be honest.